Welcome back to the Generation Strength YouTube channel. This week, assistant coach Amber Dawn is going to be helping me out this week. Uh, expect to see her face more and more. Uh, so this is going to be our third video in our squat series that we have going right now. Uh, this week we're going to kind of wrap everything up and we're going to go over the execution of the squat. Uh, we're not going to really run through everything that we've talked about in the past. If you're really new to low bar squatting, we have videos on our page that kind of that run through uh, low bar squatting for like more for more so for like a beginner level lifter. This video is going to be focused around things that Amber and I tend to always fall back on with our clients and, and you know other competitors and things like that. Uh, these are going to be three things that are very very good for anybody to take away if they feel like they're running into issues with their low bar squatting. You can just run through any of these three three things and kind of you know break down any issues you're having with your squat. So, Last week, like I said, we covered everything up to walking out and executing the weight. We've already covered setting tension in the upper back. We've already covered bracing. We've covered setting your hips and your feet. So it's gonna be a little bit different than what a lot of people would probably expect with this big takeaway here. But when you're getting, to, when you're getting ready to execute the squat, your area of focus is gonna be very individualized to you as the lifter. So what I mean by that, is if I have a lifter that struggles with maintaining good posture in the setup of their squat, so I kind of slouch over Amber. So if I have a lifter like this that tends to lose that upright position, when they're getting ready to execute the squat, I'm gonna want them to focus on staying tall when they're getting ready to execute that squat. So she gets that T-spine tall, right? She's got her head up a little bit more. She's got a nice, good upright posture here, right? Uh, myself, uh, I struggle with maintaining my rooting in my setup. So if you have somebody that likes to have a little bit of happy feet going on here, they're dancing around, they can't lock their feet in, that's gonna be your area of focus, right? So for me, when I focus on my feet, everything else takes care of itself. I don't have to worry about it. Amber, she tends to struggle with being overly extended when she breaks at the start of her squat. So when she focuses on bracing down and kind of wrapping herself in and compressing more, everything else takes care of itself. She doesn't have to worry about her rooting. She doesn't have to worry about setting her hips. She doesn't have to worry about anything else. This is the only thing she needs to worry about. So you as the lifter, you're gonna need to film yourself. You're gonna need to see where you're breaking down in your setup. And that's likely gonna be your area of focus. Go ahead and write it. Okay. So takeaway number two for today, uh, like Amber just said, we're gonna go with kind of a top down approach here with the three big things that we look for. So the second thing that we're gonna talk about today is a chest down cue that me and Amber like to use with all of our lifters. Uh, I don't think that we need to go into why chest up is a bad cue in the low bar squat, right? The goal for an, like a good low bar squat that we wanna see is we wanna maintain a nice stacked torso position in the squat. So what's gonna happen here is we have a lifter that's going to execute a heavy, a heavy low bar squat, uh, whether it's in training, competition, whatever. Uh, so Amber's gonna walk the weight out here if Amber initiates a squat and hits this downward, downward part of the squat with her chest up, with the goal of trying to stay as upright as possible, she's gonna end up in a very bad position when she gets towards the bottom here, right? So she's coming down. So we can see how her lumbar is, like she's got her chest up, her lumbar is extended. So when she goes to squat out of the bottom there, this weight is gonna be in front of her center of mass and she's gonna pitch forward really hard and she's gonna end up good mor doing a good morning to get to complete this squat. So, so the goal here, right, is keep this chest down when we break. So when we set that brace, in order to keep that brace, we need to think chest down to keep that torso in a nice straight line, right? So a lot of people worry a lot about trying to stay as upright poss as possible in the squat. So instead of instead of thinking about trying to stay as upright as possible uh, in relation like to the floor, we wanna think about trying to keep this torso in as straight of a line as possible. So we set that brace and then when we go to break and initiate the squat, we're gonna think chest down. We're gonna keep a nice stacked torso the whole time. And Amber's gonna have a nice fluid bar path coming back up. Go ahead and rack it. So pretty simple, right? Don't worry about trying to keep that chest up. Don't worry about falling forward. Chances are you're gonna feel a lot better if you just think about keeping that chest down. Uh, last part of this video today, we're gonna talk about uh, breaking at the knees first for the squat. So I'm not gonna necessarily say that breaking at the hips first is a bad thing to do, right? There's gonna be a lot of outliers here. There's gonna be a lot of, you know, a lot of individual uh, variables that come into play for somebody when they're executing a squat. 
but if we look at a low bar squat right we have this bar pretty low on the shoulders here the bar is already behind your center of mass so there's not to me there's not a lot of need to overemphasize breaking at the hips here we want to keep this bar pass centered over your midfoot in the squat right that's going to make sure that everything's run you know everything's as efficient as possible we're getting nice even contribution from everything involved in the squat so i like to tell people to break at the knees first at the start of their squat so that's going to ensure that like i said everything's balanced and we're going to ensure that we're getting we're reaching good depth and we're loading into the quads too which if you're a raw squatter i don't care what you say quads are going to be quads are going to be the biggest contributor so go ahead and rack it <coughs> there's something you want to add into that so the reason we like to think knees first is if we're already in that lean position in low bar um, with the weight already being behind us if we think about hips first we're shooting our hips back and the weight is then going to be in front of us so it's kind of a lot like being in that extended position so if we think knees first sit hips to heels you're going to keep that bar in a nice straight line quads are going to be loaded and you're going to squat straight up out of the hole can we see that? We can see it. So you can see I'm already in a bit of a forward torso lean. And all I need to do is go knees first, hips to heels. Look at that. 